A very good evening and a warm welcome to a second edition of UBC News Tonight. On this 28th day of December 2023, I'm Laureen Masika Kazimoto. Now before we get into tonight's news bulletin, let's first take a look at the top stories tonight. In our top stories tonight, 25 heads of state confirm attendance of the Non-Aligned Movement Summit in Kampala. 600 LDU recruited to support UPDF in the fight against ADF rebels. UPDF kills ADF's top commander, Musa Kamusi. And Mamadi breaks Guinness world record for the longest cooking time. Good evening once again. A total of 25 presidents have officially confirmed their attendance at the upcoming Non-Aligned Movement Summit scheduled for January 2024 in Kampala. Executive Director of Uganda Media Center, Center Ofono Pondo, has announced that while further confirmations are anticipated from additional member countries, Southern nations will re be represented by their vice presidents, ministers and ambassadors. Among the notable presidents or heads of state that we expect for NAM, because they are members, is going to be the president of Venezuela, President Maduro, Nicolas Maduro. We expect that the vice president of Chuba is going to come to represent the president of the Republic of Chuba. We expect the president of Iran. Those are the notable. Uh, from the African region, we expect a substantial number. We expect our neighbors, uh, Tanzania, they have confirmed. We expect Rwanda, they have confirmed. We expect uh, Kenya, they have confirmed. DRC, because of the ongoing election, no confirmation at the presidential attendance level as yet. We hope that by that time, they would have settled the election, the outcome of the election, and there would be a new regime it could be President Shekedi or any other in conformity with their election result. And at that point, they will confirm the delegation will be led by who? From West Africa, we expect already there's already confirmation from Nigeria, there's already confirmation from Ghana, I think there's a confirmation from Algeria. So uh, there's a uh, confirmation from uh, Gabon, I think, yes. The list is available. We can uh, provide the media when we, when we address a formal press conference at an opportune time, probably early next year or early next week. So that is really the, the meeting of NAM, which rolls over into the group of 77. Uh, we have graciously been uh, supported by a number of countries, but uh, one, uh, the two that uh, deserve really special mention and a thank you is the People's Republic of China which has given Uganda 140 SUV vehicles to transport the high-end delegates. Also the Republic of India has supported us with 10 executive buses and four modern ambulances. And of course, the other member countries have done uh, other support, which for which the, the, the government of Uganda is very grateful. Our preparations are at high gear. We want to confirm to Ugandans and the international audience that Uganda is ready to host these two conferences and summits of the president, uh, or, or summits of the president for NAM and the G77. The convention facility, the meeting facility at Speak Resort Munyonyo uh, is undergoing major refurbish refurbishment. We are there this morning. We have been given every assurance that everything will flow smoothly for the convenience of the delegates.
The recruitment of local defense units has commenced in Kamwenge district to back up security in the fight against the allied democratic forces rebels. The exercise took place at Kamwenge town council where over 50 people turned up to be part of the recruitment local of local defense units at Kamwenge town council headquarters. James Birunji Ozo, the coordinator of LDU recruitment, says out of 600 LDUs who are targeted to be recruited, 560 have been registered and 50 have turned up on day one. Mr. Chaizaya Kanayama, the Kamwenge resident district commissioner, says the LDUs are to beef up security, especially in the areas where ADF has become a menace. The exercise follows a recent presidential directive to recruit LDU as a reserve force to assist the UPDF, especially during ADF attacks. Because I have moved this morning up to now. Okay. okay. The Deputy Mountain Division Commander, Brigadier General Stephen Mugera, has officially confirmed the elimination of ADF's top commander, Musa Kamusi. Kamusi orchestrated an attack on Nyabitusi village in Kamwenge district on Monday, resulting in the tragic deaths of a 75-year-old woman and her two grandchildren, whose bodies were subsequently burned. Kamusi, affiliated with the dispersed ADF faction under the Njovu group, sought refuge in Kamwenge near Chibali National Park. In another successful operation, Uganda People's Defense Forces UPDF has neutralized yet another ADF top commander in Nyabitusi near Chibali National Park. The deceased ADF leader, Musa Kamusi, belonged to the splinter ADF rebel groups under the command of Njovu. These groups have been evading UPDF troops, resorting to scavenging for food and conducting attacks on civilians in Kamenge district. The forest, the forest of Dura, what we managed, we put our squads in that enemy, enemy trial. Today we have managed to face the enemy. We have killed one, we have killed two, uh, we have charged one SMG, we have charged one PK, and uh, three EIDs. So we have managed to capture them today. And uh, the operation is still going on to get the remaining ones. UPDF recovered one SMG, one PK machine gun, two improvised explosive devices and several rounds of ammunition. Kamsi was identified as the mastermind behind the Kamweng attacks and had played a key role in numerous deadly ADF assaults. Technical which you have and uh, maybe those ones who reported from ADF we have given them photos that they won't go into reveal that this commander friend is commander friend. But as of now we have killed it all. But with the existence and the deployment, the heavy deployment of UPDF, the situation has become calm and the people are assured of security. It is the visibility of UPDF all over in all the trading centers in the, in, the, in, the garden, in the villages. And the people are appreciative of the fact that you've come, UPDF has come in the area. Recently, Kamusi had been responsible for brutal attacks on local residents in Kamwenge district prompting UPDF to strategically deploy heavily in crucial areas until its ultimate elimination. In response to the prevailing security situation, UPDF has initiated the recruitment of local defense unit personnel LDU in western Uganda following a directive from President Yuri Kakutam Seveni. The remainers, the remaining, the group is still going to Mundu Bidi, Nejo,
Various security organs have engaged in discussion on coordinating with civilians to address the overall insecurity in the general areas of Kamwengi and Kasese districts. Haruna Mutesasira, UBC News. The Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Badiomunsi, has expressed admiration for the exemplary service of Kazo District LC5 chairperson, retired Reverend Samuel Mugisha Katugunda, in serving the nation and ensuring the education of his siblings. Notably, his eldest son has achieved the distinguished rank of professor. Dr. Badiomunsi attended the Thanksgiving service for Katugunda and his family at Kazo Church of Uganda in Kazo District. The Christians of Kazo Church of Uganda in Kazo District have on 28th December 2023 returned to church. This has been a Thanksgiving service for the retired Reverend and Tandy politician Samuel Mugisha Katugunda, the LC5 chairperson for Kazo District. My family, we are thanking God for giving us a good uh, health and to bring us up to this time and especially my children they all finished they are graduates they have finished their their studies and more especially my first born Steve Nakanwanaho. So we came here to celebrate uh, the what God has done for us uh, in, in terms of our education, um, we started, we have humble beginnings and now I've been elevated to the level of a professor. For the siblings, held their parents and church for nurturing them into what they have become today. Uh, he's, uh, he's well known in the community um, because of his contribution, the contribution that he makes, which is a substantial contribution to the community, uh, working with the uh, rural people with the poor. In this service, they were joined by the Minister for ICT and National Guidance, also Vice Chairperson in NRM Western Uganda, Dr. Chris Wariumos as the Chief Guest. We are glad and we congratulate him upon that prestigious attainment. Definitely artificial intelligence and other cutting-edge technologies is the in thing because we are now going digital, the future is digital, and these technologies which are coming up are the ones which are helping us to facilitate faster economic growth and faster economic, socio-economic transformation. And therefore, having attained his doctorate and eventually a professorship in this new field of artificial intelligence, we warmly congratulate him and we do hope that he will provide his expertise and excellence in that area to support even the government of Uganda. Mario Mose was flanked by area member of parliament, Dan Kimosho, among others. We thought it is very important for us to be here so that he serves as an example, as an inspiration to other children from this area. This is still a backward area in terms of it's still a a village, it's a remote area, far from many services, including internet itself and the ICT facilities. But for one of us to be a professor and to have a doctorate in, uh, in artificial intelligence, we thought it is worth celebrating. And that is, this is the global direction. During this service, the church mobilized the funds for the tiling of the compassion hall, where 21 million shillings is being needed. The drive raised 10 million shillings, with Minister Bayumos contributing 8.5 million shillings in cash. Robert Onyango, UBC News. Kazo. The Uganda National Council for Science and Technology is actively collaborating with all regional referral hospitals to fortify their research ethics committees, emphasizing the importance of safeguarding the rights of patients participating in health research. 
Uganda National Council for Science and Technology is currently engaging with a total of 16 regional referral hospitals across the country, focusing on strengthening research ethics committees, recognizing the significant volume of health research conducted in these referral hospitals. The initiative aims to establish robust committees to ensure the protection of the rights of research participants. In line with this objective, Uganda National Council for Science and Technology is executing the strengthening ethics and responsible conduct of clinical trials in Eastern Sub-Saharan Africa project. The research ethics committees at the hospital will ensure the rights and welfare of the research participants who are the patients in the hospitals. So this project is a three-year-old a three-year project which will end in 2026 and at the end of it all we hope to have at least three research ethics committees established at the different hospitals. Another crucial aspect is to ensure thorough examination and evaluation of the research conducted. Uh, to ensure that it complies with the uh, requirements for research ethics, integrity and, uh, and, and quality. So that's the main rationale. Previously, we had only focused on hospitals, actually university teaching hospitals. But now uh, we want to ensure that uh, these referral hospitals also have the capacity to establish and manage our research ethics committees. And Uganda National Council for Science and Technology is doing this work in collaboration with Uganda National Health Research Organization. Sharing health research results is also an area of concern, further highlighting the commitment to transparency and dissemination of research findings. Data is actually one of the key outcomes of research. And basing on data, you can design new drugs or develop vaccines or develop medical equipment and the like. Or actually it proves that actually uh, maybe this medicine can work actually on uh, uh, different uh, races of people on, on Earth. So it's very, very, very important to ensure that data is protected and shared because most of the data is actually generated from our referral hospitals and it is very important that that information is sent back to the hospitals because it helps a lot in various ways, either in terms of management, development of new drugs, vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. Regulating research is essential to prevent the violation of the rights of individuals participating in research. Sudat Kaye and Adia Nakuti, UBC News. Overpopulation, degraded landscape and poor agricultural practices along the highlands of Chigezi, Renzori and Elgon are increasingly damaging the watersheds in these regions. Characterized by increasing landslides, uncontrollable soil erosion and land fragmentation, communities here are in despair of uh, poor crop yields, poor market structures, which are rendering them in abject poverty. The Integrated Seed and Sector Development Uganda, in partnership with the Wegneg Weg, Weg Environment Research, with funding from the Embassy of the King of Netherlands in Kampala, is implementing the Common Ground Project. We have more details in this report. High population pressure, poor farming practices, coupled with climate change, continue to devastate watersheds of Chigezi, Renzori and Elgon Montania slopes. The communities have exerted pressure on the land in search for farmland for growing crops and rearing animals, causing severe degradation of landscape leading to low agricultural output, decreasing biodiversity and inefficiency in functioning of the ecosystem. The population is, is very high. The population density is very high over 1,000 persons per square kilometer. And our population growth rate is 4.5% per annum, one of the highest in the country and in the world. The average families uh, uh, is from 6 to 10. That is the average size of the families. So the population, the, 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 the area is overpopulated and uh, much as the number of people are increasing. The soil, the land is limited, it's not expanding. 
So as a result, we are mounting a lot of pressure on the, our environment. Basically, the now when you come to agriculture and how they reap from agriculture, we cannot say they are getting much more from what they dig because their land is too small for each household. You find they have cut it to pieces, so land is fragmented. Here, indiscriminate human activity on the land is causing landslides, mudslides, and soil erosion including the loss of human life. A number of tree species have disappeared due to uh, the need that people have for them. People have cut down the trees and most of these, uh, these hills, if you can see, they are very bare. The water sources are no longer clean in the, in the rivers that are here in the streams, in the wetland, because of uh, the contribution that comes from... Uh, in, in those farming systems, we have very many challenges, which is... Uh, facing our people. Telling number one, the mindset of our people. Because we can have money, we can have extension officers, but when the, the mind of a person is not set, is not built. The Common Ground Project aims at restoring resilience of highland farming communities, which are undergrowing degradation threats through to high population pressure. At the community level we focus very much on uh, restoration and uh, that's because we're on the steep slopes so we have big problems with erosion. Some of the areas we work in there's more than uh, 100 tons of soil lost per year per hectare uh, which is very high. Um, if that is not uh, uh, reduced significantly some of these areas uh, they cannot be farmed in maybe 10 or 20 years so it's really important that, that we do something about that. Under the Common Ground Project, communities converge using the participatory integrated plan approach that emphasizes bottom-up sustainable development. The project empowers smallholder farmers to become self-reliant to farm and manage the land in balance with nature. On this approach we work with communities or households uh, to develop visions and also aspirations on where they want to be uh, in the future, they, let's say uh, about two to three years. So we work with them to plan and we engage, we engage them in the planning process. Uh, they develop, uh, they, they, for example, their current situation. They also uh, design uh, their, current, their future situation. With the target of 150,000 households, the four-year project is beginning to show more light in just a year of implementation. common ground of then Kutua Mara, Trisha Triaga, Twaliva, a Yamanu, a Vilquisha Vira to Vera Vice, to attend the Kaho project, Yokuja Kat Gume, to Chirane, to uncover a member, to one who are coming, to hear as the Gamanua, to attend the Kamgan Kuinga Jetura Hindi Samanua. So they now know that. Uh, that they are not supposed to dig up to where the road is or up to the middle of the road like they used to. They know that trenches will somehow control soil erosion or even completely control soil erosion. They never Works towards restoring upstream biodiversity, supporting watershed management led by motivated local stakeholders at the community through the local government structures, no doubt is in light step to improving biodiversity and restoring watersheds. Despite already achieving the Guinness World Record for the longest cooking time, clocking, it at, clocking in at an impressive 125 hours, Dokas Bashema Chirabo, also known as Mama D, is set to continue her culinary marathon for an additional 90 hours until the 31st of December. Take a look. Amphitheatric attendees continue to gather at Chela Town Council to witness and be part of the historic moment as Dokas Vashe Machirabo Mamadi shatters the Guinness World Record for the longest cooking time. Some of us is not about the meals, but the meals I had just under the spaghetti, 
Chigere, and Coco, Biona, to read it there. But I'm so much grateful for a Ugandan to come up with such a passion, to come up with such a project. And then we Ugandans, we decided to support my effort, supporting. And we are still here. Been here for four consecutive days, but I go and rest and clean up. Yeah. From the day, Mam uh, from the day Mama did started, I was here. I landed from Fort Porto, yeah, to here. Dr. Sibashima Chirabo, also known as Mama D, is a Ugandan chef who commenced her cooking marathon on the 23rd of December with the goal of breaking the existing record set by Alan Fisher from Ireland in Montsu, Japan. Alan Fisher cooked for an impressive 119 hours and 57 minutes, dethroning Nigerian chief Hilda Basenya, who previously held the record at 93 hours and 11 minutes. <laughs> Since starting on the 23rd of December, Dokas Bashema Churabo has prepared a remarkable 116 meals. She is determined to continue her cooking marathon until the 31st of December, awaiting verification and announcement from the Guinness World Record team. It is noteworthy that before embarking on the marathon, she submitted proposals to various organizations seeking support although many did not respond. We went on looking for sponsorship, but he, oh sorry, she was neglected. She came to us with this amazing and daring proposal, looking for support. And um, when we looked at it, 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 it ties in perfectly with our brand communication. It is important to note that the Guinness World Record does not provide financial rewards to record holders, rather it celebrates the achievement of being the world's best. Dokas Bashema Chirabo joins the other esteemed Ugandan Guinness world record holders like Raymond Kahuma who made the largest Rolex and King Oyo recognized as the youngest reigning monarch among others. <laughs> Nasadi Fatia reporting for UBC News. The Uganda chapter of the International Community of Banyachigezi, ICOB, has officially introduced the Paolo Ngorogoza Education Scholarship Fund to enhance girls' education in the Chigezi subregion. The launch ceremony was held at a, a playground in Mohanga Town Council, Ruchiga District, and was presided over by Thomas Tayeba, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Let's give him a round of applause to Kumachira. Named in honor of Paul Ngorogosan, the Naguo Security General of Chigeze at the Scholarship Fund commemorates his by Toro in relocating the Banya Chigeze to Wankole, Toro, Bunyoro, and Rujumbura during a population surge in Chigeze. The fund's inception took place at the ICOB Uganda 2014 Convention in Kanungu with the primary objective of supporting girls from Chigeze in pursuing higher education at Kabale University. Currently, 13 girls are already benefiting from various disciplines. Under this initiative, Grace Mugabire Mutebide, the chairman of ICOB Uganda chapter, emphasized that the program aims to empower girls in the region, consequently reducing teenage pregnancies and early marriages. Especially today, the main activity was to launch the Ngorogoza Education Fund and raise funds for the girls who are now enrolled at Kabul University. At the moment, they have uh, 13 girls who are benefiting from this scholarship and who are doing various courses. Richiga County Member of Parliament, Roland Jom Jenny, stressed the importance of including boys in the educational drive to address their current engagement and risky behaviors. For me, my idea would be, yes, we want to promote the girls. We need to also pull the boys to Chile, you know, we have neglected them completely. During the event, the Banyachigeze community was urged to seize available opportunities for regional development. We even have gold out of the 1.2 trillion US dollars worth of gold reserves in Kanungu alone. We have millions of dollars worth of reserves of gold. So we have what is what we have, which we should utilize to get what we want. I'm saying we can extrapolate it 
this moment, what do we do in Kigezi? We had the brains for a very, very long time, but our industrial efforts. In his address, Thomas Taewa pledged to support the Ngorogoza Education Scholarship Scheme, donating Uganda shillings 50 million for its implementation. Taewa also encouraged a co leadership to extend the initiative to Banya Chigezi beyond the six districts of Chigezi. <laughs> I COB founded to promote the culture, social, and economic development of Manyachigezim underscores the importance of passing down customs, language, and wisdom from forefathers to future generations. <laughs> UBC News Tonight takes a very short break, but we return with more stories after these messages. Nineteen sixty one facts about NAM. The non aligned movement, NAM, is a forum of 120 countries that are not formally aligned with or against any major power bloc. It was founded with a view of advancing interests of developing countries in the context of the Cold War confrontation. After the United Nations, it is the largest grouping of states worldwide. When it is KB o'clock, you need more from your voice bundles. That's why MTN is offering you more minutes across all networks that don't expire. Buy the new 90-minute Freedom Bundle at 5K or the 200-minute bundle at 10K and jazz with no limit. Katiteri ate ate. No excuses. Make the call now. Dial star one zero zero star two one hash or use the My MTN app and enjoy your freedom bundle today. MTN, together we are unstoppable. Terms and conditions apply. MTN is regulated by the Uganda Communications Commission. Metal Bus Industries, Namambe, the manufacturers of buses for transporters, schools, tour operators, and special purpose vans and any customized vehicle. Metal Bus Industries offers a range of buses known for safety, comfort, and reliability. Depending on your needs, a bus can simply be a point A to point B people mover with just seats or a special design that includes power outlet, Wi-Fi, television, refreshment center, and any other specification. Buy your buses from METU and support industrialization of Uganda. Contact us on 0788-118586 or 0782-030303. Email us, metuafricabus at gmail.com. Visit our website, www.metubusafrica.com. In this family, we can't agree on anything. Mother. We can't even agree on what to watch. All the games to play. Mother. We can't even agree on what to eat. At least the one thing for now we can all agree on is the swap to use. He likes that it's big and lasts long. Anti-economy. I like that it keeps my skin smooth. Ate Alina Echovu. And the children like that. It smells amazing. Everyone is happy. <laughs> Movit soap comes in four fantastic flavors. Movit family soap is truly soap for the whole family. Movit. All day confidence.
Welcome back from that break. As we approach the end of 2023, we delve into the accomplishments and setbacks of the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development in an interview with the State Minister of Lands, Dr. Sam Mayanja. In accordance with Article 237 of the Constitution of Uganda 1935, all land in Uganda is to belong to citizens allocated to them under various land tenure systems, customary, freehold, mile and leasehold. In Uganda, the acquisition of land from vulnerable individuals, particularly by investors and land grabbers, is prevalent fraudulent practice. The Ministry of Land is actively engaged in fulfilling its mandate, reaching out to communities to educate them on land ownership and vivanja through security of occupancy. <laughs> For Abiwanja holders, now you can't be harassing the entire population. You can't be harassing 95% of the population. Meanwhile, State Minister of Lands Dr. Sam Mayanja, in alignment with Article 237 of the Constitution and the President's Directive, have emphasized the prohibition of evicting Vivanja holders and arrest of those involved in land grabbing. This tense has alleviated corruption, double titling, and other issues within the district land boards of Wakiso. Mukono and Bokalasa. Never any sector, Mukuba Fipan, Abonava NFP, Murava, Javan, you have any one of the Mukube, Mukono Nebibia, Ateva NFA, our National Forest Authority. As the year concludes, the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, in an interview, has highlighted both achievements and challenges. State Minister Dr. Sam Mayanja notes that in 2023, Uganda finally confirmed security of occupancy after President issued a decree on 18th August 2013, with subsequent ones following. The date is the security of, tenure, of occupancy. You remember Vivanja holders, especially in Uganda, that's where there are problems. We, we, we have consolidated that security of occupancy, given a right given under Article 237, sub Article 8, which the titled holders did not recognize, had not recognized. The minister added that, according to the president's directive, court orders evicting residents on their bibanja were rejected until security committee, led by the RDC, had thoroughly analyzed the matter. The, 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 the evictions and cannot go unpunished. That has been the high leading us now to what I say next year to finally complete the job. The minister states that the remaining task is to implement section 237 sub act 9b which mandates issuance of land titles to Bivanja holders. In accordance with the directions of his excellency the people to go back on their land and to provide them with security. However, the minister condemns the incident in Gomba where one person was killed due to conflicts between two parties who hired gangs to protect their interests. The minister assures the people of Uganda that those using gangs will be punished and those involved are currently in hiding. First of all, gang terrorism doesn't give security of tenure on land. It doesn't give you the security of, of, of occupancy. It is a, 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 an occurrence which must not occur again in this country. Gangs being hired to protect security of occupants of land is something which is unlawful, which is a criminal, and those, inv those involved in hiring them, those accepting to be hired, and, uh, and those actually occupying in the same of hiring should all be arrested under the law. Looking ahead to 2024, the minister warns all land grabbers and promises better results for Ugandans concerning land issues. Jamil Sekaja, UBC. A tragic incident unfolded in Janda village in Namgongo, Chira, Wakiso district, where residents discovered the lifeless, lifeless body of a woman. The victim, identified as Bianca, hailed from Nsawo in Chira, Namgongo. It is alleged that she was murdered by her friends at Itzotepa. The deceased Bianca, aged 25 years old, was a resident of Insawa in Ichira Namugongo, Wachiso district. According to residents, Bianca's body was found concealed in a charcoal store in Janda village in Namugongo, Chira, Wachiso district. <laughs> Bianca was last seen last night with some friends 
ate bako mune nona ziti zote. Nimechikanga wecha wa doo shivinyo. Mwango mwala anze bade mamanyi bulonji. No rojo rwe njini na mlavye kukurwe bulo. Sawa ngemu. Residents say that Bianca may have been subjected to assault before a tragic demise. However, they condemned such acts in the area. Leaders also shared their thoughts on the murder. Police accompanied by a sniff dog arrived at the scene of crime, but little information was discovered. Subsequently, the authorities apprehended a one Jido Joe, and investigations are currently underway. Deputy Police Spokesperson Kampala Meto Poitan Luko Wesijili confirmed the murder of Bianca and the arrest of Jido Joe, who will face charges of murder. Uh, through our response, we have managed to arrest one, one suspect and uh, uh, the maid, uh, a bar maid, to help us with an investigation. So details will be availed as soon as possible, but uh, we are working around the clock to arrest more suspects with the information we have with us. Wesijili urged Ugandans not to resort to criminal acts, but to use lawful means to resolve conflicts and disputes. But we do appeal to members of the public to desist from such criminal acts of uh, assault, murder. We do about the uh, murders that arise from domestic violence. We do appeal for them to remain patient and seek other avenues on how to resolve their differences within their marriage. Uh, because at the end of the day, when an investigation is instituted and the police makes arrests, you will be taken on by, the, by courts of law. Bianca's body was later taken to Mulago Hospital for post-mortem. As the investigations continue, Deborah Namamonde, UBC News. As the year draws to a close, Christians from all walks of life are preparing to usher in the new year with anticipation and gratitude at Christian Life Church, Boise, led by Pastor Jackson Senyonga. The upcoming December 31st gathering is not only a celebration for born-again Christians, but extends an open invitation to all Ugandans transcending religious backgrounds and faith expressions. In his insightful remarks, Pastor Senyonga reflects on the significance of the past year, emphasizing the need for thanksgiving and unity among the diverse population of Uganda. Pastor Senyonga acknowledged the protection and preservation bestowed upon the nation, encouraging everyone to join in celebrating their shared identity as one nation under God. To the youth, this is your time to shine. The youth, this is a message of innovation. Again, like I say, don't look to the government. The government can help you with them yoga and others, but if you cannot help yourself, transformation and economic change does not start when you get a hand out or a hand up. Innovation is a mother of prosperity. Looking forward to 2024, Pastor Senyonga rejected the idea of resorting to negative activities and advocated for a commitment to the Lord, emphasizing the importance of prayer, preparation, and seeking God's blessings for the upcoming year. December 31st, we are going to have maybe 200 to 300 security personnel. This place is going to be swept let us rise within ourselves and say, how can I come out of this predicament? How do I get out of poverty? And how do I add blessings? And I'm not speaking to those that are only unemployed. I'm talking to every one of us. We can increase the bracket in which we operate when it comes to our economy. We can increase. Pastor Senyonga stressed the significance of stability as the foundation for productivity, correlating peace and the ability to innovate and build a prosperous future. The government has given us what we need. The government does not owe any Ugandan anything other than infrastructure and peace. Stop looking at the president as someone who ate your money. Stop looking at the, the legislators and uh, government ministers as 
you are eating your blessings away by sitting the way you are to continue how, how to continue the way things are and you are comfortable senyonga urged citizens to rise above challenges take initiative and explore opportunities to break the chains of poverty so that kaye you seniors <laughs>
Welcome back. And now into the world of sports. The Uganda Badminton Association has entered into a partnership with Malaysia's Young International, securing them as the new kit sponsors for the national team for the next two years. The exciting collaboration was officially announced by the company representative, Nyacho Lucy, at their shop in Bukoto. Annette Nakamia, the president of the Uganda Badminton Association, expressed her enthusiasm for the partnership, going on to commend Young International as the inaugural sponsor for the badminton national team. We are working uh, in concurrently with our own brand and business, which is Trendy Sports. Uh, Young Young joined us in 2019. However, due to COVID, we're not able to roll it out. And we agreed in, for, with a number of aspects that we wanted them to cover if they are coming into Uganda to bring in their products here and us as representatives. So we have worked with Uganda Badminton Federation to make sure uh, they help us develop the badminton sport in Uganda. And that's where we are and that's why we are here today to actually um, hand over uh, development produ products of young, ranging from t-shirts, shoes, um, rackets, everything they will use for the sport. I'm a national badminton player of Uganda, um, and I'm also representing young as an ambassador, young international, a badminton brand from Malaysia. Uh, young is providing equipment like rackets and um, attires for putting on, I think this sponsorship is helping me as a player and my teammates to, you know, be well equipped. You're not worried of being shabby on court. You're not worried of lacking uh, rackets. They provide strings. They provide grips. They give us actually everything. So I think when uh, t for a player to perform well, you also need to be well equipped because mentally you're prepared to play. Um, after this, uh, receiving this sponsorship, I think as a player, um, I'm settled as a player. I'm concentrated. I think I'll give it all. My, I'll give it my best in the upcoming events in the All Africa Championships that are coming up next year. And I hope and want to perform better and maybe get a medal for Uganda. Upon getting the Young Young sponsorship for the badminton team. It has helped me to improve on my confidence when court since I'm going to be smart. I'm going to, to concentrate more on, the, on how I play my, my techniques. And um, I believe that I'll play more better. I'll, I'll play better this time round because I don't have any worry about a matching attire to represent for my country. Okay. Well, that wraps it up here in UBC News tonight. want to thank you so much for your company this evening. I will leave you with tomorrow's weather forecast with Kutessa Mili. I'm Lorin Masika Kazimoto. Good night. Thanks for tuning on UBC. My name is Kutessa Mili with your weather update we are still having. Thunder showers dominating most parts of the country. Nevertheless, other areas are still having sunny intervals. Seeing the satellite picture, we are having the rain belt being retrieved back into our country, enhanced with moist winds that are blowing in from Indian Ocean coming into our country, together with the local effects like Lake Victoria and the other mountain areas. Bring us the rain for that we are having later. Tomorrow morning, though, we expect to wake up to a bright sunny day across parts of Mubende and the nearby areas, but the rest of the country place is expected to have light showers but our capacity campaign will have thunder showers in the early mornings of tomorrow the eastern sector we are waking up to a, a thunder showers across parts of Tororo and some other parts of ginger but solid with light showers moving to the western stretch a pickup of light showers still in the early mornings is expected in most parts of the side but apart from a scene where we are seeing a sunny intervals in the mornings the, weather, the northern sector we are having a pickup of light showers and thunder showers across Lira but the rest of the place like a guru Chitukumu up to Alua is expected to wake up to a sunny intervals.
After an hour, though, we are seeing a pickup still of light showers, parts of the central, but our capital Kampala will have a pickup of sunny intervals in afternoon hours at maximum 24 degrees Celsius and across some parts of Masaka, but the rest of the area with 25 degrees Celsius. Moving to the eastern, we are having a pickup of sunny intervals across afternoon hours across Ginger and Toro areas at maximum 25 degrees Celsius, but so we are seeing a pickup of light showers in the afternoon hours at maximum 26 degrees Celsius. In the western stretch, a pickup of light rains across the western is the space to have to have it in the afternoon hours at a maximum 26 degrees across Kasese and Barara, Kawal Highlands with a lowest of 21 degrees Celsius, Masindi with a highest of 28 degrees Celsius. Moving to the northern sector, we are seeing a pickup of thunder showers dominating most parts of the west, the, the northern sector, at a maximum 25 degrees Celsius and 28 in the Karamoja regions. Apart from Alua, where we are seeing a 31 degrees. Celsius. He is moving out of Uganda to wearing the fisties across the globe for you. We are forecasting sunny conditions across Lagos at a maximum 33 degrees Celsius. Doha, London and Beijing with sunny intervals though Beijing is pretty cold at a maximum of 3 degrees Celsius only and London is 11 degrees Celsius. Washington DC with cloudy conditions at a maximum of 12 degrees Celsius only. Thanks for tuning on UBC. My name is Kresa Milingabo. Stay tuned and see you tomorrow. Development and financial boosting of the common person is one of the government goals. And this is why the President, His Excellency Yuri Kagutam 7, has come up with different initiatives to achieve this. Among which 